not to my knowledge, no. When you go into, now looking at that video, going into the back gate, it, it looks like to me, we can go back if we need to, that the defendant opens the gate <coughs> and looks like flashes a flashlight in the backyard. Do you see that? Yes. Before, y'all both go in there. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when, did he say anything at that point to you after putting that flashlight and looking in the backyard? No, ma'am. Okay. When you watch that video back and you see the commands and then the shot, um, do you now know what he said? And I, again, I can back it up. I think, I think he said, hands up, show me your hands. Hear him ask about a TAC med kit. We've already explained that to, to the jury. Is, is that what you're referring to? Yes. Why were you wanting to get a TAC med kit? For life saving procedures. Someone is in the house that's shot now. Is, is that when you could have applied, not you, but TAC med shows up, but a, a halo seal or a chest seal? Yes. If there's a shot or anything else you need in there. All right. Um, so y'all go around and go into the front. And then you go inside, and I hear your voice before his making some announcements of some sort. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember what you said? Um, from the video, I said hands up. Okay. And why are you saying hands up? I can't tell you exactly why I said hands up. Um, I don't know if I was in a heightened state of adrenaline, and that's the last <laughs> thing I heard, so I said it too. Um, but I wanted to announce that we were coming in the house. Why, why would you want to announce that you're coming into the house? So anyone else that's in the house <coughs> knows that we're coming in. When we, we see you guys, well, specifically we can see the defendant going and pointing into some of the other rooms before we actually go to that back bedroom. What is that called and why is he doing it? It's clearing um, and he's doing it to make sure that there is no one hiding with a gun waiting in a room to shoot us or to get one of us, you know. Get back in the bed, back bedroom. What is your priority when you get back there? What do you do? As soon as I came through the door, um, I heard the baby, um, and that, that became my sole focus. I got him to come to me. Um, we went down the hallway. I remembered that it was cold outside because I had my jacket on. And there was a blanket on the back of the couch. So I wrapped him up and I went and stood on the curb with him so that he didn't have to see what was going on in there. So whatever happened inside the room after you took him outside, you don't know? No. Was Felt like 30 minutes, but I know it was not long. By the time that we see the defendant's body camera come out to the front, we already see some police <coughs> personnel that's already there. Is that yes, right? Do you recognize anybody on that video? Yes, ma'am. I okay. recognize all of them. Uh, I work very closely with them. Okay. Who are they? Tell me their names. Officer VTech, Officer Cotton, Officer Fuller, Officer Gilbert, and then Sergeant Horner at the door, and then Officer Hoffman in the room. Okay, and VTech and Cotton, were they part of the TACMED team, those first two officers at the scene, or do you know? They're not. They're assigned to Baker Division as well. And the first few officers that we see that come into the room and tell the defendant to, to get back, get back, who are the, who's that? That's Officer Cotton and Officer VTech. Did they then perform some type of life-saving they did. Were you able to perform any life-saving measures on Tatiana? I was not. Your focus was on that little boy. Yes, ma'am. From what we see in the video on State's Exhibit 1, did the defendant perform any CPR life-saving no, measures? No, ma'am. Okay. VTech and Cotton show up, they do. When you're still there at the scene, about, I, don't, I didn't have it marked, but I know it was in, in the last maybe minute or so, maybe two minutes of the video, the sound goes off. 
Yes, ma'am. Do you know why? Uh, that would be muting your body cam. Do you know why he would have muted his body cam? <coughs> no, ma'am. Do you know whether he did that on his own or maybe somebody told him to do that? I'm not sure. You don't know. And you go to, when you get, you're outside, does another officer come and relieve you, or where do you go after you're out there with Zion? I'm outside with Zion, standing on the curb, um, and Officer Ray pulls up, and we get him into the back of a patrol car and turn the heat on, just because it was so cold outside. And then where do you go? I went back in through the front door to see if there was anything I could do to help. And was there? No. So where do you go? What do you do? I was uh, still by the front door, and that's when Sergeant Horner told me to go find a car and sit in it, and Officer Hoffman was assigned to sit with me. And so how long do you think you were in that car, just sitting there? A couple of hours. And do you talk about what has happened? No, ma'am. Okay. Talk about other things? Yes, ma'am. When does your clean attorney, Terry Daffron, when does she show up? I can't tell you the exact time, um, but it was probably 30 minutes or so, an hour. After the shooting? <coughs> so when she gets there, does she go, do you guys go back inside the house and do that walkthrough we talked about earlier? We never go back inside the house. Um, it's just we go around to the backyard with Major Case. All right. Go back around and then you point in certain areas. Yes, ma'am. Is any of that recorded? I'm not sure. After, and the walkthrough that you're doing, is Terry, is, she, is your attorney with you when you're doing that? I believe she was, yes. After the walkthrough, what happens? I go and sit back in the car, um, and then Major Case tells me that I need to go down to 1000 Calvert. And what is 1000 Calvert? That's where their offices are. When you get there to their offices, um, do you remember about what time it was? No, ma'am. Still the same day it would have been that if the shooting is around 2.30, 2.33 or so, you're out there for hours and then you go to the major case division. Yes, ma'am. So do you do the interview that, that same early morning hours? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you remember how long that was? I'm not sure. I know, I know we were down there for some time. Who all was in that interview with you? Everyone that made scene. It was, oh, in the actual interview? Yeah, who's, yeah, is someone from Major Cases interviewing you? Detective Brimshus and Heisey, and then Terry Dapron. All right. Do you do another interview after that one? Yes, I don't remember it, though. Yeah, okay, that's all right. Um, and then, does anyone else ever come and talk to you? Anyone with Major Case? Part of the investigation talk to you after those two interviews and the walkthrough of the scene? I had an interview with I, our internal affairs. Okay. And what is the internal affairs division within the police department? Just tell us generally what it is. They investigate officers to make sure that what they did was legal um, and two GOs, that they didn't break any laws or GOs, general orders. All right. So now that you have um, watched the video, can you tell us, does it appear that you or the defendant ever inspect um, to see if there's any damage on the front of the, or the side door, can you tell? You can tell when you're walking up if there's, if there's forced entry. Okay. Was there? Was there on those doors? Right. Was no. There? Um, and we know, because you guys go in the front, that front storm door, um, but did you guys check to see whether that was locked or unlocked on your first approach? I don't believe we did, though. No. But now we know it was unlocked, because yes, we go through it. All right. Did y'all, when you are clearing the cars that are in the driveway, <coughs> do you remember which direction those cars were pointed? I don't. remember whether or not those cars have license plates? No, ma'am. No, you don't remember or no, they did not? No, I don't remember. If they had license plates, is that something that you could do is to run license plates yes, on cars to see?
see if who the others are. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, in this case, though, you, you guys were clearing the cars. Um, did y'all run the license plates to see who the owners of the cars were? I did not. Did you need to do that with the information that you have from the 911 call details? With, with my experience then, I wouldn't have thought about it. Okay. Wouldn't have thought about who owns that car. Or, did you think at all about that those cars were the neighbor's cars, as it says in the call details, or were you didn't even think about it? No, ma'am. Okay. That's fine. Three weeks you were cut loose, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, okay. <coughs> Did you ever see a Tatiana's gun? No, ma'am. My, my, I saw her face. Is that burned in your memory? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever hear the defendant say gun? No, ma'am. That there's someone down inside the house. As far as I know, well, I'll just say this. Do you want to be here? No. Is this been extremely difficult for you over these last three years? Yes, ma'am. You don't want to have to testify and be in that seat. No one wants to be involved in a shooting. Sure. And nobody really likes to testify either. No, ma'am. as well being. Do you know that you testified yesterday? Yes, Can I have a minute? I'm going to pass away, Sean. Can I take a minute? Yes, let's, let's take, take a break, so let's take a short break.